everyone it's Gina from Gina K designs and welcome to our May release party tonight we are so excited because we have some beautiful stamps dies and a layering stencil bundle that I can't wait to show you and we also are going to be joined by some of our illustrators tonight in fact four of them are going to be here and they're going to show you so many unbelievable projects and I love that because they really give you ideas right out of the gate so you can figure out exactly what you want and exactly what you want to make. But before we get started, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, happy release. Hey, it's our <clears throat> release party. Are you excited? I'm excited and glad to see. <laughs> Look at all these stamp and chatters out there. I know. It's so exciting <clears throat> to see everybody coming in so early tonight, too, to have so many of you guys here. We absolutely love seeing you and love seeing all your comments. And throughout the night, if you ask any questions about the products, Tom will shout them out to me. We'll do the best that we can as we go along. So how was your day today, Tom? Oh, it was pretty good. I was on uh, dog duty a good part of the day. <laughs> yes. I'm not, a, I'm not a dog whisperer. <laughs> I'm like a dog shouter. <laughs> right? A little I bit love more them. <laughs> I love them, but I, I, I'm, I, I don't claim to know the finer, uh, the fine, the, the you know, the fine details of uh, uh, dog management. No, I know. We never took Puppy. any dog training classes. So we're just winging it. We have Rena and Brian's family dog. So um, they're on vacation and we we signed up to babysit for the next three weeks. So doggy sit. So we're, we're learning, though. We're getting it's OK. It's fun. It's fun. It's just uh, it's surprising sometimes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who uh, who's in charge? But. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not us, by the way. Sometimes. <laughs> well, Tom, I know you're going to be back a little bit later on in the show, um, but we are going to get right into it. Now, the first thing that I want to show you guys is our brand new incentive set. It's always exciting for us every month to release a brand new incentive set. And if you're new to Gina K Designs, our incentive stamp sets are yours free with any $75 or more purchase. Now that $75 has to be an actual dollar spent. So if for some reason you have a coupon or if, um, you know, there's tax or something like that or shipping, it has to be $20, $75 after any coupon code, but before tax and shipping. So let me show you the fun set that we have this month. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this one. I love this stamp set. So this is called Sweet Spring, and it's got all these cute little garden things. I love this little wheelbarrow and the little um, uh, pot with the tools sticking out of it. And I don't know what these are. I think they might be like big green onion. No, they're bulbs. They are bulbs, some kind of bulbs. They look like tulip bulbs, actually. And then um, the birdhouse with the little magnolias here on the branch. I love that. And then it's got where flowers bloom. So does hope. Much love and hello. Now, one thing that we did differently this time, we always have a, a a stamp set available as an incentive. But this time we did a coordinating die set. This way, if you're somebody who qualifies for the stamp set and you like to cut out images like this, you can pick up the coordinating die set. And 
I think that's really fun because images like this, I love to create scenes with images like this. So I'm going to get my master layout six out. I'm going to do some hills. I'm going to do clouds. I'm going to do the sun shining. And then I'm going to do some of these. And I think these will make the cutest little note cards all through spring and summer. For all you avid gardeners out there, the garden from the time, you know, the first, uh, the last full moon of May, I think it is in Wisconsin, all the way through the fall. This is a great set to play with. Okay, so that is our new incentive set. And you can pick up the additional die set, the Sweet Spring die set sold separately. Um, and that's available now. Okay, so I want to show you the first set. We have two illustrators that are not able to be here tonight. So I want to show you their stamp sets. So the first one I want to show you is this gorgeous stamp set called Birds and Magnolias. And this is by Hannah Drapinski. Hannah has such a great art style. It's really clean lined. So I don't know if you've had any of her flower sets from the past and things like that. She does birds. She does all kinds of interesting stamp sets, scenery, but she's got this real thin, clean line about her art. And this one is just beautiful. It's got these huge bird and magnolia clusters, which I love for some of those fancy fold cards that we've done. You can use these for pop-up cards. You can use these for all different kinds of things. They're nice, big, giant images. And then it's got all these little magnolia pieces. So you can pop things up. You can add more flowers into the mix. And then, of course, it's got a big coordinating die set because it wouldn't be right to have these really big images that work so well for those fancy folds and not be able to use that um, with a die. So this is the Birds and Magnolias die set. I absolutely love it. You can color it, you can emboss with it, you can do so many things. And if you don't have birds, I feel like these birds are very generic. I mean, you can color them to be whatever kind of bird that you want. Just go on Google and type in some sort of bird that you want or just generic springtime birds and you can make these whatever you want them to be. So I love this set and it is avail available now in our store in the What's New category. Now we have one more illustrator that can't be here tonight. So I want to show you her stamp set. And I love this one because some of her other ones have retired. And this one is one that we're all, or a lot of us are going to need right around now. And what I love about this, this is called um, Hats Off. And what I love about this is it's got these two graduation caps and the diploma, and then it's got grad, real big. It's got a coordinating die set so you can cut the word grad out and pop it up, or you can you know, do different things with it. Of course, you can cut out these images, but it allows you to do the class of. And this I really love because I think it's great for scrapbooking too, if you like to scrapbook. And also, I think it's really cute if you're a grandparent and you've got little ones that are graduating second grade or graduating third grade. Why not get them in on the action now and just do a little hats off to the grad, you're so amazing, or the future is bright, um, follow your dreams, You even something simple like you did it. They got through second grade. I just love having a set like this in my collection that can be used for more than just college graduation or high school graduation. So this one is now available, the stamp set and the die set, hats off it's called, now in the what's new category. Yeah, we've had some graduation ones in the past, but I think most of them have been retired and it's always nice to get something new. Plus, this font is very modern and fun. So it's a little bit different than just that straightaway block style print. Very fun. Great job, Beth Saleka, if you're out there watching tonight. Okay, well, so, now, yes. Quick question. Uh, Mary asks, do your dyes cut on the line or do they cut and leave a white border? They leave a white border. So I will show you. Let me see if I can find a card here. Give me one second. Of course, I'm not going to be able to find a card that, <laughs> oh my goodness. Seriously, I don't have one card here that uses dies. Yes, I do. Okay. So 
you guys have seen this card before. So you can see I stenciled this and it's die cut and you can see it's a tiny thin little white border around the perimeter. So yes, it does leave a white border. And I personally really like that. However, if you are not a border person, what you can do, for example, let's say you're cutting the graduation cap and you've stamped it in black or you stamped it in red. Just take a little blending sponge and some of that ink and just go around the perimeter and you can fill that little white edge in. You can do that with flowers too. If the flower, you want it to go all the way to the edge, just add a little bit more of that same ink color. Me personally, I like the white edge because when I'm doing bouquets and I'm doing my own floral clusters, that little white edge separates the flowers and the leaves a little bit. And I really like that. So, okay. So now we're going to go on to our very first illustrator who is waiting in the wings. She has sent a video in. All of our illustrators are now doing their videos pre-recorded because there's less hassle and we don't have to worry about their internet not being fast enough or clear enough. Lisa Hetrick has an amazing set for you this time, and I'm going to show it to you now. So here is her brand new set. Oh boy, I really zoomed in close for that die cut, didn't I? This is her brand new stamp set, and this one is called Spring in Bloom. And look at this giant postage stamp. I love that. And then it's got all the elements to actually turn it into like a canceled stamp. And then... You've got these um, beautiful flowers. She's going to tell you more about these. Let your dreams blossom and a kind word is like a spring day. And if you look real close, I want to point this out right away because I don't want anybody to think that it's not supposed to be this way. Lisa did this and the stars and this design right here a little distressed. So you'll see little white spots in there which gives it a more Americana feel. And I really like that because a lot of times, you know, you've got this nice crisp stamp and then the cancel is just stamped on there and it's a little distressed. So she thought of everything with this. And of course, there's a big die set that's gonna allow you to cut out this big postage stamp and some of these elements so you can create beautiful pop-up elements. Now, let's go to her right now because she's got she's got so much to share with you and some beautiful samples. So let's welcome her. Let's say hello to Lisa Hetrick. Hi friends. Hi Gina. Hi Tom. Hello everyone. Welcome to tonight's release party. I'm super excited to be here and very grateful to you for letting me come into your homes tonight. I have a really fun stamp set to share with you tonight called Spring in Bloom. And it's got a lot of really great spring blooms that could be anything you want them to be, depending on what color you decide to uh, create with them. So yeah, super excited. So Let's go ahead down to the down camera. Let me walk you through the entire stamp set, the inspiration, and the free card idea sheet. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Here is the brand new stamp set. It's called Spring in Bloom. I'm really excited about this. This one's got some unique elements in it that I don't have in my other stamp sets but are really great builder pieces to use with anything in your collection. I've got this wonky postage-like background piece, and there's a coordinating die for it. And it's a little bit longer than a regular postage stamp-like thing. So it's it's got a rectangle uh, feel for it. So it fits really nicely on an A2 size card and I'm going to share that with you. I've got this little element and this little wavy postage like element and these three stars as well. Two really fun sentiments that are very inspiring and then I have these two big honkin blooms. This is also the stamen for this bloom and we have a two-step stamping here. So I'm going to walk you through and show you all of this. And these two blooms are super fun and kind of integral to being kind of like a chameleon flower where no matter what color you decide 
to um, paint this or color it, it's going to give you a different look. So let's go ahead and dive in and take another peek here at all of the elements. So the two sentiments are, a kind word is like a spring day. Let your dreams blossom. We've got the big honkin' bloom here, and it's a big one. And I've got this bloom with the solid to give you the two-step stamping. We've got some leafery elements, the stamen. And then here are all of those pieces to build with to create that kind of interesting postage-like background. Okay, there's also the coordinating die that's available with this set. So, okay, let's dive in and take a look at the inspiration. Here is a really fun card project where I used the open bloom, the smaller bloom, and it kind of looks like a crocus. Now, it's inspired, the two blooms are inspired by a crocus flower. However, you're going to see that no matter what color I change them up to be, you're going to get a different look. So it's kind of fun. This is a, some emboss resist to create this really dreamy looking like a flower element. Okay, here's a fun card mashup. I mashed this stamp set up, Spring and Bloom, with wildflowers and weeds. You recognize that wheel background and the lavender and some of the other elements from wildflowers and weeds. And just added in the violas and created that crocus kind of look like it was popping up out of the ground in front of this whole scene to create this really fun mashup. Love it. Okay, now we've got some really fun uses of the postage stamp elements here. I've got the Let Your Dreams Blossom, got that big honking crocus-like flower that's just opening up. I've used the die here for the postage stamp and the postage stamp for the background, just to kind of create some really interesting look without all the height in the card. Love that. Okay. Yes. Loving this. Okay. This is, I painted this, I watercolored this in kind of a very traditional um, crocus-like flower. Added the elements for the postage stamp to just kind of give it a little bit of a background, and it's super fun. Now, here's an example of a card that I'm just kind of showing you how if you change the color up on the card, you get a different look for that flower. This looks more like a parrot tulip flower, and I've got a couple other examples. And I just used the leafery here as blades of grass just to kind of come up and um, just be really super cute, make it look like this parrot flower was popping right out of the grass. Added the kind word is like a spring day, which fits right in that circle element. A little bit of a postage to add just a little bit of extra texture. And the other thing I want to note about the um, the stars is that I've already built in texture in the stamp. So it will stamp a little bit distressed. Okay, here's another example of using that wonky postage-like backgrounder. But this time I just cut it out with some white cardstock, used the die, cut it out. And then I did a little bit of blending of wild dandelion put that little parrot tulip design right on the cover here, and then just added those elements and then popped it open, let your dreams blossom right on the inside instead of putting the sentiment on the outside. Okay, I love this card. This one might be my favorite. I really, or the next one might be my favorite. I'm not really sure. I love them all. And I know I say that every single time. So here are the crocus flowers kind of used in a traditional way. Um, I did the two-step stamping and I kind of created this little half wreath right here, just kind of going up and around the car just to give it some visual interest. And then added that a kind word is like a spring day. Super fun card. All of these cards that I'm sharing are the stars of the show, where the stamps are the star of the show. And you know, I just love to be able to show different combinations 
of using the stamps um, for these sets. Love it. Okay, so here is an example. This one is a little bit more artsy. I guess you could say artsy. So I took that big honkin' flower and painted it like a parrot tulip flower. I added a little bit of extra painting into it, elongated that stem just to give it a different look, showing you that you can use your stamps. So let's take a quick look at the stamp. So here's the stamp, and you can see that the stem is like a three quarter. I elongated it here so that you could create the longer stem and just kind of showing you how you can use your stamps to start to create a floral composition that you can stamp down and um, color in. Kind of cool. And I did that with some with all the watercolor. So super fun. Okay, let's take a quick look at the free card idea sheet. I have another free card idea sheet for you for the spring and bloom card ideas. There are eight ideas here, different kinds of things that you can do with the stamp set. And this is available to you as a free download. You can grab this at my website at indigojadeart.com slash craft your joy or just go to indigo indigojadeart.com and click on the button freebies and all of the freebies for every single stamp set that i've created in my gina k collection are there you can also grab this in the in the um, facebook group and it's also available there as a free download pdf I hope you enjoyed today's stamp set reveal and inspiration for spring and bloom. You can grab this stamp set at ginakdesigns.com right now in the what's new section, or you can head over there and just type in Lisa Hetrick in the search bar and you will find all of my stamp sets in my collection. I'll be going live this Friday with a brand new live tutorial mashing up the spring and bloom stamp set with something else in my collection. So I hope you can join me. I'll be live right here on YouTube at 11 a.m. this coming Friday. So I hope to see you there. Thank you so much, Gina and Tom, for inviting me in tonight for our stamp set release party. I'm so grateful to you both. And I'm so grateful to all of you for taking the time out to join us tonight. and. Um, I'm just so excited. I can't wait to share more with you and enjoy tonight's release party. Thanks so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye friends. Lisa, those, those cards were amazing. And your idea sheets are such a big hit. I was just reading all the comments and everybody wants our next stamp set that you do to be called big honkin flowers. <laughs> I love the way you describe everything and your cards were amazing. Those watercolor designs, that purple and that bright orange and yellow and oh my goodness, sold. I absolutely love it. So thank you so much, Lisa. And you can find that beautiful new set called Spring in Bloom. This one right here, Spring in Bloom. Uh, in our What's New category at GinaKDesigns.com. Okay, well, thank you, Lisa. Now, our next illustrator waiting in the wings is Deborah Warner, and she has created a really interesting stamp set for us, something that we need in our collection very much because lots of you have asked for this, and I know what you're going to say, <laughs> and we'll address that at the end of the video, but... I gotta, t I gotta show you this stamp set. This is adorable. Take a look at this. It's called Cordial Cats. And these are big. You know, those sneak peeks sometimes, you think they're gonna be tiny little images, but these are not. These are nice, big kitty cats. And I love this real tall one and this kind of shorter one together. That's you and me, Tom. And then over here, the ones with the heart tail. Well, that could be you and me too. Or it could be best friends, which are my best friend. And then I love this one, this kind of like back view. And then it's got some fantastic greetings. And I'm going to let Debbie tell you more about this stamp set. It does have a full die set that goes with it for all of the cats that you can cut out. You can also cut out the little mouse 
and the little mouse hole so you can create a scene. So I'm going to let Debbie tell you about these, but there is one greeting I do want to um, just mention here is this one here, a pet's love is never replaced, but always remembered. So sorry for your loss. I love that she did this one a little bit more generic because maybe, you know, maybe you love cats and there's lots of cats in your life and you love doing these kinds of things, but you might need something for a dog or for a guinea pig or something like that where you want to send a card and you don't want it necessarily to say cat, you want it to say pet. So she does have several generic greetings in here that will work, well, at least a couple of them that will work for more generic things. And of course, all of these beautiful designs too for the outside of your card. All right, well, without further ado, let's bring her in. Welcome, Debbie Warner. Hi, Gina. Hi, Tom. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our May 2023 release party. This month, I have another fun stamp set to share with you. It's called Cordial Cats. And I created some sassy looking cats. And here they are. <laughs> um, this is my favorite in the middle here. He just looks so sassy. I actually wanted to give him a little bum, but um, did thought that might offend some people. So instead, feel free to place the little pink gem there or whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, I do have some greetings that can be used on the outside of your card, like happy anniversary, have a great day, happy birthday, thinking of you, congratulations, hello friend, thanks. And a big meow, because if you have a cat, you know all about the meow, right? Um, sometimes they're just never quiet. And I have a greeting that can be used in the event that a friend or loved one loses a pet. Um, a pet's love is never replaced, but always remembered. So sorry for your loss. And that can be used for any furry friend. Um, and I also have a new furry friend for you to love. Let the snuggles begin. Um, and there are some other ones in here as well. So as you can see behind me, I have my samples. I made um, a bunch of them this time as always, and I would love to share them with you. So I am going to go to my overhead still shots so I can explain a little bit more about the products I used on the cards. Okay, here we go. On this example, my colors are tranquil teal and dark chocolate. The happy Father's Day greeting is from Let's Golf. And the cats are stamped in Blue Lagoon, Tranquil Teal, and Ocean Mist. I did use our lattice embossing folder for interest on the dark chocolate panel. On this thank you card, I used Dusty Rose and Black for my colors. Master Layouts 4 was used to cut out the Dusty Rose panel. I then stamped it with our background stamp in Petite Flourish. The shaker window was cut with our oval shaker die. And the bits that I have in there are from Disco Ball. And then I picked out the black pearls from our gold, silver, black mix. And I picked out the pink ones from our rainbow mix. On this pet sympathy card, I used the wreath builder template and stamped the smallest cat in a rainbow order. The colors I used, um, starting with the purple one, I did the dark lilac from our layering inks, uh, passionate pink, cherry red, tangerine twist, wild dandelion, lucky clover, turquoise, sea, and blue raspberries for my colors. On this card, I created a scene. I used Peach Bellini and Craft and black for my colors. Bitty Backgrounds was used to make the wallpaper on the wall. And that's basically it. It was just really a fun card to make. The wainscoting line across the top of the wallpaper, I just did that with a marker. On this card, I just wanted to create a group of cats that all looked a little different. So I stamped them in the colors Black Onyx, Sweet Corn, Honey Mustard, Stormy Sky, Warm Cocoa, and Soft Stone. This is a very simple flat card, easy for mailing. 
On this card, my colors are cherry, red, craft, and black. I cut the happy anniversary greeting out with our large sentiment strips. I used Master Layouts 4 for the heart and for the flag. The flag I stamped uh, in cherry red uh, with the Biddy Backgrounds heart stamp. The cats are actually embossed. Um, I used clear embossing powder over black ink. And then the brick wall stencil was used with white pigment ink for the bricks on the background. This is a mini slimline card. I used Master Layout 7 to cut out a stormy sky panel and a white panel. I stamped the paw prints in stormy sky. The cat is stamped in black and then heat embossed in clear. I also colored his eyes with a zig marker. It's kind of hard to see it, but I colored them green. And then um, the pearls are from that pearl mix, and I just picked out some of the green ones. On this tag, I used our decorative tag die to cut it out. The paw prints and the you are my favorite cat person grading are stamped, I believe, in slate. I stamped the cat in our craft ink, and then I just used some markers to go ahead and lay, add a little bit of detail to him. So if you do stamp that in a lighter color, you can definitely give them some personality and style. On this tag, I used Sandy Beach and our Coral Reef card stocks. I did go ahead and just use a circle die that I have and then use the lots of dots uh, die to add those little holes. I love that die. I think it just looks so cool. And I think it's perfect for a round tag. So I went ahead and did stamp the cat on the back. And so it does say, have a perfect birthday. I hope you enjoyed my samples and found them somewhat inspiring. I have a favorite card as always, and this time it's this one. I had so much fun creating it with the, the scene, um, creating that wallpaper with bitty backgrounds, and I just love that little mouse house. Um, I just think it's so cute. So I had fun with that. And I also love shaker cards, so this is a favorite. And I just couldn't put that one on straight. I had to put it on an angle because I just think he looks so sassy. <laughs> Anyway, um, as always, please share your work. We love to see what you do. Um, we've got some incredible card makers in our group. I just love looking at all the cards that you guys post. So much fun. So anyway, um, have a great rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of the release party. Gina has some really fun things coming up to show you. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Debbie, those cards were absolutely adorable. I love the tag too. You always do a tag and you always remind me to make tags. I love that. This set is so cute. My daughter, Alicia, has a black cat, Honey, and I love Honey. In fact, Honey made me a cat person. I was always a dog person and Honey made me a cat person. So I am so glad to have this uh, stamp set because it's just the perfect Alicia's birthday is coming up and it's the perfect stamp set to use for her birthday. And also we got to get this set in the hands of Kathy Zilski because now she's got Franklin that she babysits all the time for her daughter. And there's even a Franklin cam. So I definitely think we got to get this set in her hands and see what she can do with it as well. Debbie, your cards were amazing. And thank you again for taking time to show us all of those beautiful samples. The Cordial Cats stamp set and die set is now available in the What's New category on our website at GinaKDesigns.com. Okay, well, now I'm going to show you another set. And this set, this set is really touching to me because I really love the greetings in this set. I love the artwork, of course, the flowers. But I also really love the greetings because whenever I need a sympathy card, you know, with sympathy is great, but sometimes you want to say something a little bit more. And I really love this set. So let me show it to you right now. This is a brand new set by Arjita Singh and it's called Sweet Memories. And I, I love this saying right here, may your memories be a blessing. Oh, that is just so nice when you have to make a sympathy card. And then of course we have with sympathy in here, but then this set also is good for other things. Like if you 
have somebody that's struggling a lot and you just want to make a card for them to let them know that you're here for them, I'm here for you. I love that. With love, I'm here for you. And of course, hello, sweet friend, which is a little bit more upbeat. But we have so sorry. And I think you could do with sympathy and prayers and with love and prayers. So you can mix those two together. And then this gorgeous floral with this additional bud that you can kind of have sticking out here with the leaves. And once again, a huge die set that goes along with this. So you can use it for those fancy folds, those pop-out cards, anything you want. Now, Arjita is with us today. I'm so excited about it. She always makes such unbelievable masterpieces when you see her cards, the way she paints and watercolors and does colored pencils and Copics will blow your mind. And this presentation that she has for you is no different. You're going to love it. So let's welcome her to the program. Welcome, Arjita Singh. Hi friends, Ajita here. Welcome to this release party today. And I'm super excited to share and talk about the new stamps that I have for all of you. It's called Sweet Memories with some beautiful sentiments and a super large, huge floral for you, which you absolutely love. I love doing this. And uh, this stamp set is very loose style, open, and uh, I'm sure you will all have a wonderful time using it. So, so many techniques, so many watercoloring uh, tutorials coming up. And uh, you can use any coloring medium of your choice. Of course, water coloring be my favorite. I have made few samples and uh, I'll be sharing it on my social media and on my YouTube channel for, with all of you. So let's just go ahead and uh, look at this stamp set closely. And uh, we'll also talk about a few of the inspirations and a few of the card samples which I did. And uh, here we go. So to start with, I'm going to share a few no-line watercolored cards. And this one is uh, in the shades of pinks, purples, and some muted greens. I also created a water splash background at the back of the card. And I've used the coordinating dies to cut out this uh, bunch. Finished it with a beautiful sentiment. The next one is also no-line watercoloring. And I have used some brighter oranges for this. And I love this sentiment paired up with this. So the next one is very simple. I was trying some uh, resist heat resist uh, technique. This is uh, using the embossing powder and uh, this makes water coloring very easy and uh, that was beautiful. Now coming to some Copic coloring. This is uh, my favorite and I've used a combination which I absolutely love. So this is no line coloring. The next one is uh, Copic coloring with lines and this is super bright and super cheerful. I love it. So I've used a sentiment from uh, Lisa's set. And uh, this one is uh, using an element from the stamp set, which is just a bud. And I have paired it with some heat embossed uh, sentiment and uh, very, very quick and easy. So here are the cards. Once again, for you all, I'll be sharing pictures on my social media. And I have a few videos lined up for my channel. And uh, that is all from my side. I hope you will have a lot of fun. And uh, the release is absolutely power packed. Thank you, Gina, for having me. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. See you soon. Take care. Arjita, your watercoloring and your coloring is so unbelievable. Thank you so much for those gorgeous cards. And I saw a lot of people in the comments saying, oh, I wish I could color that way, or I wish I understood how to do no-line no coloring. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Arjita has a fantastic YouTube channel, and she shows you step-by-step -step how she does the no-line watercoloring and how she colors many of her flowers. So Go over and check out her um, YouTube channel and you can learn how to do a lot of those techniques. And really, it takes a lot of practice. I mean, you guys know I don't call myself an artist because I don't put the practice time in. But if it's something that you're passionate about, following people like Arjita for that no line coloring, you're really going to get a lot of information. And she will be doing videos, I'm sure, with her new set as well as lots of her past sets. So check out her YouTube channel. All right. Well, Arjita, thank you so much. And 
all of our illustrators, I'm just going to take a moment to say all of our illustrators will be posting their cards in our Facebook group. So if you are not a member of our Facebook group, you can come over and join. It's a private group. So even if you don't like the idea of being on Facebook to have like lots of Facebook friends, you can just make your name like Robin Stamps or, um, you know, Julie Creates and then join our Facebook group. So this way people can't really find you over there. You don't have to friend anybody, but come on over and join our group. And Tom will put the banner up for you. The name of our group is Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. So if you are looking, just type that into the search bar over on Facebook and join. Tons of inspiration over there. Now we do have a lot of members. We've got like over 42,000 members in that group. So that may seem a little bit overwhelming, but they are the nicest people. And when you post a card in there, oh my gosh, you're going to get so much love because people love to be inspired by each other in that group. So we'd love to have you. So check it out. All right. Well, our final illustrator who is waiting in the wings tonight is the fantastic Melanie Menchinger, who's been with me forever. I want to show you her brand new set. It is absolutely beautiful. This is called Bold Flowers. Look at this set. It has got so many images in it. I absolutely love this butterfly too. I'm very jazzed about that. I'm also really liking the two separate butterfly pieces. So you could either put these together to have kind of a different orientation, or you can have a side angled butterfly with this. I love it. Love it so much. And all of these gorgeous flowers, there is a complete die set for all of them called bold flowers. And even these little antennae, I think that's how you say it. Um, you know, the little things at the top of the butterfly. You're going to love these. I, my eyes are really bad right now because the lights are right in them. But this says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then you've got stay strong. And then you've got just smile. And I love that you can put little words in there. It's just the glare off of this with the lights that's hard for me to read. When they're stamped, you can read them really nicely. And then if you don't want to do those, it's also got the plain antennas, antennas for you. And again, full die set. And I want to remind you guys that all of the stamp sets that you've seen tonight come with coordinating dies. And our dies have a huge magnet inside for storage. Now these magnets are thick. Can you see how thick that is? I hope you can see that. They are probably, mm, I know they're at least an eighth of an inch, maybe even a little bit more than that. And they don't like flap around. They're not floppy. So your dies will not fall off of these boards. And every one of our die sets that coordinates with a stamp set like this comes with an appropriate size board. And then the other thing about our dies, if you're new to Gina K Designs, our dies are already detabbed. So you just take them right out of the bag. There's no sharp pokey ends that you have to deal with. You don't have to break them apart or cut them apart. They come right out of the bag, they go on the magnet and they are ready to be used. And then Sammy, who designs our covers for our die set, what she does is she figures out how to lay all the dies out on the board so they all fit. And then she places them on the cover of the die sheet, how they fit on your magnet. So this way you'll know when you see these, how they're supposed to go on the board. And if you want more magnets like this, you can go over to Stampin' Storage. They are the people who make all of our magnets for us. And you can buy packs of their magnets in this five by seven size to match. So if you love this idea for storage, you can go over there and buy lots more magnets so you can do all of your dies this way. All right, so bold flowers, so excited about this. Melanie is waiting in the wings there. So why don't we welcome her? Let's welcome Melanie Menchinger. Hey everyone, Melanie Minchinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Thanks so much for coming to our May release and letting me share my newest set from Gina K Designs with you, Bold Flowers. 
Bold Flowers is a bold set of floral elements, butterflies, and greetings that are going to be perfect for creating cards for any occasion year round. I want to just jump right into samples and then also talk about past sets that it coordinates with and different kinds of inky techniques that you can do with these bold images. The first one that I want to show you with this set, I use three different flowers and a couple of the different leaf elements to create just this frame to go around one of the sentiments. So no techniques here, it's just one single color. I just use some of Gina Kay's ink cubes and then just stamp them, mirror image until I filled it out. So you can see how beautiful these graphic elements are. It's just really easy to make a clean and simple card and flowers that really pop. The next card I'm going to show you has a die cut on it. So there is a coordinating set of dies that will cut out every image in the set. So for this one, I did a rolling technique and it might be a little bit hard to see, but I inked each of these flowers in a lighter color and then rolled the edge in a darker color. And it just creates a really beautiful gradient and a really nice glow. Then I took one of her blending brushes and then just added a little bit of blended ink around here, flicked on some water to create some spots, and then accented it with some dew drops. Again, very easy to make, but I just love how big these flowers are and how easy it is to build up a focal point on your cards. Here's one that's a little bit more involved. Got three different flowers on here. I wanted to make sure that I have every flower showcased on my slip, and my butterfly just fell off, flip, flew off. So let me pop that back on there. Got that on a foam square. And I didn't use any antenna on these particular butterflies, but I will show you some different antenna options that I have within the set. So again, I rolled these flowers and these leaves and then the butterflies just to give them kind of a glow. And then I love the dimension of having certain layers popped up there with the die cuts. Here is another one that I did. This one, I wanted to use some non-traditional colors, and I just think that that is really fun to go out of the box, not always have green leaves. So I've got some turquoise and blue denim, and then lucky clover and green on this little puff one here that kind of looks like a hydrangea. And then I rolled my butterfly again with the turquoise and the blue denim and put one of the little clay hearts in the middle. Something fun that you can do with some of the antenna that are included in this set, I've got bold antenna for top view and side views for all three of those butterflies. But what you can also do with those is you can stamp them into the center of these different open flowers. And that's going to give you a really tropical look like you've got little anthers and stamens coming out. So that's just a way to change it up and make it look like you have even more varieties in that set. The next card that I want to show you Here's one. I'll just switch over to the butterflies real quick since we're talking about those antennas. So you see on the past two cards, I didn't put any antenna on there. For these, I just did that direct to stamp technique with my cubes so that I could create a rainbow gradient here then blue tones and pink tones on this one. Um, I accented these with some of the, um, I think they're called rainbow rhinestones. Disco rhinestones. Anyway, Gina carries them. And then I just stamped on those three different solid antenna on there. Now, another set that this set coordinates with is my Beautiful Butterflies 3. And this set actually contains little antenna that are made up of words. So you have these little mini greetings in here. If you have these two sets and you want to use a bold sentiment or rather bold antenna for the little antenna rather than sentiments now you can do that and if you want to use any of these little word antenna like um, miss you love you a wish for you have hope etc you can put this with one of these three butterflies now also because i love these little word sentiments and y'all really gave me a lot of feedback that you love them too I've got Just Smile and Peace Be With You and Stay Strong in there. So that's just going to give you more options with all of the sets. But again, that's a very easy layout to do right there. Another one that I created with the butterflies, I thought this was really fun. I used the stems here and it kind of looks like kites to me. So that was what I was thinking of here. But I also wanted to point out how I've got the top view butterfly. But not only can you do a right or a left facing butterfly, but you can put the right and the left pieces together 
and it's going to look like you have that butterfly at an angle. So that is going to give you another option so that you can make a fourth butterfly with the set. And then I just put in the little piece be with you and the stay strong. And then I just blended in some of the coordinating blue raspberry ink to match my cardstock um, base there with one of the blending brushes. And so we have a sky. And then the colors that I used on those butterflies, I've got the wild lilac and some of the plum punch. So I just think that is such a fun card, very quick to put together. Another one that I did, uh, I wanna show you that Gina had mentioned in the sneak peeks that this would look great mixing it up with my beautiful basket set. So I have that here. So if you haven't already noticed, um, all of the bold elements, the flowers, the stems, and the leaves are miniature versions of these big images in the bold flower set. So to show you the scale of it, these are three images from the beautiful basket set stamped. These are the coordinating three images in the bold flower set. So they're two to three times the size. When you mix and match these together, it's going to give you so many different options with the scale. So let me just show you a background paper that I stamped. This is with the mini flowers that are in beautiful baskets. And this set sold out um, on release night in March in just a couple hours. So hopefully we've got a lot of them ordered this time and it's just just came back in stock. So I know you will love using these together. Here are the same two images, the flower and the leaf that matches but now in the bold flower set, so you can see how much bigger it is. And then when you mix them together, you can create something like this. So I just love that versatility and being able to stretch your crafting dollar that way. Um, here is one that I created with three flowers from the new set and three flowers from the previous set. So you've got each of the coordinating ones. I popped up the ones from Beautiful Baskets and so I love how that really creates kind of the new buds of a flower and then takes you through that life cycle that you then have the larger versions of the flower. And then I use the Just Smile here for my antenna. And this was stamped and rolled with that black ink after I had inked it up with some of the blue inks. So I love how that turned out. And you can see it here with all the different stems and the leaves. And it always just, it gives you a lot of, opportunities to, if you have a space that you need to fill it or it's not balanced or whatever, just add one more leaf or one more flower. So that's my tip. I just, I think it's kind of foolproof to be able to build layouts. I also really like having flowers and die cut flowers that you can build around your sentiments or around your different die cuts from like the master layouts. So this is an oval from one of the sets. And instead of stamping the butterfly here, I just decided to cut it out with my die cut that coordinates in the new set. And then I added my thank you greeting on it and then just stamped the bold antenna on the oval die cut with the plum punch. So it almost looks like it's cut out, but it's not. We do have little die cuts for those little, um, little antenna if you want to. And then I just stamp some of the flowers and the leaves on that plum punch so that it would be tone on tone and you would have a coordinating background. I'm really excited too to have the large and small images so that you can put them on the insides of your cards to bring the outside in and make that coordinate whether you wanna have a large bloom and then maybe a little tiny flower on the back as your little logo for where you're signing it. Okay, and then I want to show you, because it does go with this basket set, um, showing these are some of the new flowers. So you have these larger blooms in here and the larger leaves. So these are all stamped. They're um, inked up with the powder blue and then rolled in some of the wild wisteria. And then the leaves are done in the light and the medium spruce colors. And then I just die cut this basket and... Um, colored it with some of my alcohol markers. I also put a little dewdrop on the little nail and I just think that looks so cute on the handle and then just colored in a little bit of a shadow. I think that's all the samples that I made today to show you. Let's see. Here is an envelope that I decorated to go with this particular card. And so I just love, love, love 
just how these flowers pop, how they look rolled. There are so many other great techniques for bold stamps, like emboss resist, embossing. Um, but I just, I couldn't get enough of just how it looked, just stamped with just the one color ink or rolled in the two colors of ink. Um, I have a inspiration sheet, um, as always, that I'm going to be uploading to our file section on our Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends Facebook group. So this is a free PDF and it will give you eight um, layouts here that are represented for all of these cards that I made samples for. So I hope you enjoy these sets. I hope you enjoy having them play together with your others. Just to let you know also, if these um, shapes look familiar to you, if you have embroidered flowers, that is a previous set of mine, all of the flower dies that match that stamp set will cut out the flowers in this set, but it will not cut out the new butterfly elements that we have in here. So just letting you know, that's just another option. Um, you can have one set or both sets, but this set will cut them off. So I can't wait to see what you will all make with these um, new flowers. I think that they're just, um, just the perfect balance of being realistic, but also being whimsical. And so I think they're trendy and timeless. And I just don't think it's gonna leave my desk. I think it's kind of like the new, um, a new like pressed flowers or sketchy flowers um, for me to play with. So I hope you enjoy these bold flowers. Thank you so much for coming. Please upload your creations. Thank you so much to all of us. I um, mean, to all of you, our customers, and thank you to Gina. Have a great party tonight, everybody. Happy shopping. Bye-bye. Melanie, your cards are amazing. And I... I don't know what's wrong with me, but I didn't even realize how beautifully this new set goes with the beautiful baskets. I'm so glad that stamp set and it came back in stock because I could just see everybody using those two sets together. Absolutely beautiful cards. Thank you so much for sharing all of that gorgeous artwork with us. Melanie will be um, sharing those cards in our Facebook group. And also, Melanie does make videos. So if you haven't seen Melanie's YouTube channel, make sure you check out her YouTube channel because she always does a YouTube video showcasing her new set. Now, um, I also want to remind you all that all of our illustrators that have been here tonight have YouTube channels. Debbie Warner just started one, and she, does, she posts her segments of the release party on there so you have a resource to go to. Lisa does lives, and she does videos all the time. Melanie has a YouTube channel and she does videos and also Arjita does videos. So lots of inspiration out there. Well, I want to thank all of our illustrators for joining us tonight. Now, I saw a lot of people saying, what is the rolling technique? What does that mean? What is rolled? So I'm just going to demonstrate what she's talking about for you so that you'll be able to see what rolling is. Okay, so let's just look. She had mentioned that she used some purple and some blue denim ink. So this is a super easy technique. Some people call it rock and roll, um, and I have videos on it as well. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a lighter color ink. Um, maybe I won't do it with these colors because I want to do it with something that's really going to show you the difference. I'm going to do it with Tangerine Twist and, let's see, mm, Red Velvet. Okay, now this is a brand new stamp. I just pulled this out of the package, so I am um, prepping it a little bit by rubbing my finger over it. And you want to rub your finger over it until it starts to look cloudy, and you're going to get a much cleaner image out of it. Now, I haven't showed you my bundle yet, but I'm just stopping to show you guys this. So as you can see, if you stamp an image with just the straightaway color, you'll get a great image. That's the first time I stamped it. You can see the quality of our stamps. They don't need a whole lot of prepping, but that's what, how the image would look. But if you want to do the rock and roll or the rolling technique, what you're going to do is you're going to ink this up, right? Okay. And then you're going to roll the edge, just the edge of the wings. I'm just tilting that stamp and you can see how I got some red onto the edges there. Now when you stamp that, 
Now you have red around the outside. Hopefully you guys can see that. Can they see that pretty well, Tom? Yes. Yeah. So that's rolling. And when you do a butterfly, you're kind of just rolling on the side, like on this side and then rolling on this side. But when you are using something that's rounder, like a flower, you can do a full turn of your hand and just catch all the edges. So that technique is called rock and roll and it's super easy to do. And you can do it with lots of different chunky style images, those solid silhouette style images. And this stamp set is the perfect set for the rock and roll technique. So hopefully that made some sense. <laughs> no, the orange really won't hurt the red. It's just resting on the surface. And I always start with the lighter color and move down to the darker color. I do it all the time with different, um, images and I've never really, I've never damaged an ink pad. Now I would say you don't want to go black ink and then try to roll yellow on it. You're going to ruin your yellow ink pad. But if you have yellow and then you go down to a really orangey red, there's already yellow in that red. So it's going to be totally fine to try that technique and get that kind of creates a glow. All right. Now it is time to show you the new bundle. So I'm really excited about this bundle. This bundle I created specifically for my friends at Simon Says Stamp for their create event. And when I was trying to decide what to make, of course, Jennifer McGuire and I kind of talked a little bit about this because we taught that class together. And so she said she wanted a butterfly in there. And I said, okay, and I want flowers. And she said, of course, she wanted flowers too. And so we decided to name this set Create Friendship. So this has an index sheet in here and it's got a three-part layering stencil set. I love this stencil set so much. I can't wait to show you how easy it is to use. It's got a full die set that also has included in here a word and shadow die. And the word and this whole set has a magnet in it. Of course, you can see all of the dies are pre-cut as usual, nice solid magnet. And then this is the layout for your magnet. I use these all the time for my layouts. And you know what? Sammy and I had a conversation. <laughs> I am so, sometimes I don't know where my brain is, but I called Sammy um, yesterday morning and I was all upset. And I said, Sammy, the images on the die sheet are backwards. And she said, I know because they have to be backwards because otherwise they're not going to lay out right because that's the way you lay them out on their back. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm <laughs> such a ding dong. <laughs> so I'm going to use her layout here and I'm going to put these onto my board right now. And of course, you know, I love the pre-cut dies. No sharp edges at all. You're never going to cut yourself. No extra work with our dies. They're just ready to go right out of the package. So it's pretty easy to see where they go. Let's hopefully I can get it all right here. But yeah, I said to her, this is backwards, Sammy. And she said, yes, because the die is backwards because it cuts backwards so that it cuts the right way. And I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> Question. what is wrong with me? Yes. Question from Holly. Uh, she wants to know if the large ink pads are felt or sponge. They are felt. Our ink pads are felt, which is really, really great for images like these. When you're doing images like these and you've got all these fine little detail lines, the foam ink pads will clog up into those little lines and you're going to get more of a blob than you are detail. So the felt ink pads, you saw how nicely that stamped right, right out of the gate. You're going to still get that crisp image, but all those little lines are going to stay very detailed. And also, um, in the Gina K Designs ink has a smoothing agent in it. So when you stamp our stamps with our ink or you use them for ink blending, you might look at them and go, oh, that is that really smooth? I'm not sure that that's so smooth. And then you're going to walk away for a second and come back and it's going to look like it's airbrushed because we put a smoothing agent in our ink 
that gives you that solid, clean, crisp look. So, okay. I hope that helps. I, I really worry about that when people uh, use images like this with any kind of like thicker kind of ink or squishy ink pads. So if you've got some um, linen ink pads or felt, some people call them felt, you're going to get a, a crisper image with these. All right. So let's get to it. So now it's also got this gorgeous stamp set. So we've mimicked some of the images, most of the images from this layering stencil in stamps. So you can do several different types of techniques. You can do rock and roll on here like Melanie did with hers, but you can also do the kissing technique things like that. If you don't know what any of these techniques are, my YouTube channel is full of videos with these techniques. But tonight I am going to use the layering stencil. And like I said, it's got a lot of pieces in it. It's got three layers, the die set, um, the die set, the word and shadow die, the magnet, and this big six by eight stamp set. So I don't like to make a long project on release night because I know that everybody's been here already for an hour, but I absolutely have to show you a project. Now I am going to show you two of the cards that I made at create because I want to show you, I use the masks and fillers. So if you remember, let me just grab it here. Our last bundle had a, um, had this in it. This is called Masks and Fillers, and it's got two masks as well. So these are used to fill in on your stencils to create texture. So if you haven't picked up this stencil and you didn't get the last bundle, it was in the last bundle, pick up this stencil. It is such a great one to use with any of your layering stencils. What word is in the die set? Oh, okay, I really should go over that. I'm sorry, I got so excited to make a project that I have to, I have to, um, <laughs> to show you. Okay, so, so when Jennifer and I were creating this, we thought, what is it about us that we wanna convey? And of course, what we wanna convey is friendship. So we made this set all about friendship. So you've got the big word friendship, which will cut out with the shadow die if you choose, or you can actually die cut the word friendship if you wanna do layers and you want it to look more like an embellishment or a, a thicker element. Then you also have the word friend. Now you can cut the word friend out with this shadow die and then just trim around that little spot right there. It's way easier than you would think. If you want to use the die to cut the word friend out, just cut out friendship and just snip it at the D and you'll have the word friend. But because the word is friendship, you can also snip it after the S and you can have the word friends. So you can use this a lot of different ways. It's almost like getting three dies in one. Then it's got your and our. I like both of those because your friendship, right? Your friendship, thank you for your friendship, your friendship, let me find these here, means so much, but you can also say our friendship means so much. Then you can do hello, friend, so lucky to call you my friend. Um, let's see here. Best friend, thank you for your friendship. Best friend forever. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Our friendship is magic. And then there's a small your and a small hour. If you don't want to use these big ones, maybe your space is a little tighter that you have to fit the greeting in and you just like that small block style letter so you don't have to be as frilly. So then it's got, what I love about this is most of the butterfly layered butterflies are a butterfly body and then you've got the inside filling. <laughs> but we did this one with four separate layers. So you've got this large one for your light color, but then you can do these two layers together. You could do them the same color if you want, <coughs> pardon me, but 
you can also do them different colors and it just gives you so many more options. You've also got these little dots here that stamp in the center of the flowers. So we did two of the flowers in the stamps, but there are actually three flowers in this bouquet, as you can see here. Now, if you prefer stenciling to stamping, you're gonna use the stamp sometimes, but you tend to stencil a little bit more. You can actually die cut all of these different pieces, like this one, you can die cut this right out of your stenciled image as well. So it's a mix and match. You can stencil some of it, stamp some of it, mix and match the whole thing. What is the name of the smaller floral banner stamp? Oh gosh, I can't remember what that one was called. I just thought it was called maybe floral banner, floral border maybe. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look through all of our packaging to see. But the new one is the curved floral layering. And that one is now available as a standalone tonight. Okay, so let's make a card. And I am not even going to, um, I'm not going to die cut anything tonight because I have so many ideas to show you. But I'm just going to stencil straight away on my cardstock tonight. I am going to show you the two cards that I created for the class and that's why I brought out the masks and fillers because I used this stencil with my cards. So the first one I wanna show you is this one here. This is made with the stencil and the die pieces. And then I used the polka dots from the masks and fillers. And I used the mask part, that's the extra parts that are in the stencils, minor across the room, the oval and the circle. And I laid that oval right in the center of my cardstock and I just dusted around the edge. I'm going to show you the dusting technique in an upcoming video to show you how you can do this. It creates a grounding element. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm a little dry. It creates a grounding element for a greeting and for a floral bouquet without adding the thickness. And if you don't have, um, you know, oval dies, you can use this the same way. Then I want to show you this card. This one I made and I used the lines, the stripes in this. I did a little crisscross design. I cut the large, the large um, die here. Let me just show it to you because it's very big to do the whole floral thing. And then I decided at the end that I wanted one big, one flower to be popped up. So I did an extra flower and I popped that one up with a foam square just to give that a little bit of dimension. So these are the two of my cards that I made at Create and I taught at Create and I wanted to show them to you. Jennifer made two cards and she actually has a video that she posted on her channel tonight using this layering bundle as well. And I believe she shares, just shows you the cards that we made at Create. Since people paid for those classes, I'm not gonna teach those same exact cards, but I will be teaching other cards on how to use all of this. So, you know, kind of the same, but different. All right, so I have a piece of cardstock here that I cut out to three and three quarters of an inch by five inches. And I'm gonna do a little floral thing here. So let me get my ink stand and let me get my blending brushes. And I think I'm gonna do this in some oranges and pinks. So I'm gonna use Sweet Mango and I'm gonna use Passionate Pink together to create my flowers. So let me also get a piece of paper just to put down here. Okay. So I'm going to just tape this piece of cardstock down just a little tiny bit here on the back. And I'm just going to tape that down onto my cardstock. And so I'm going to lay this. I'm going to go right down here like this. I think I'll just do this a little lower. Should I do that or should I go up a little higher? No, this is good right here. This is great. Okay. I'm going to use a little pixie tape to tape this down. And then just to be on the very safe side, I've got a post-it note here 
And I'm going to put a post-it note right at the top just so I don't get anything onto any place that I don't want it. Now, my butterfly down here is overlapping a little bit, but I'm going to stay away from that. But if you're worried about it, you can always put just a tiny little bit of pixie tape over it to cover it or another post-it note. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of sweet mango and then some passionate pink in there. And I'm going to kind of blend this haphazardly. So I'm going to start with the sweet mango. And I am going to, yes, we do sell the pixie tape, uh, Gina. I don't know if we have it in stock right now, but we should. If not, it is definitely on order. So I'm just adding a little bit of orange there. I'm going to add a little bit over here. And I'm going to add a little bit up here. And you can see that there are two little elements right here that are the centers of a different flower. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit up here. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with some of this passionate pink. Tom does usually focus on the questions. However, if it's a question about when something comes back in stock, he usually doesn't ask me those questions because I don't have those answers. Those are more customer service oriented questions. He usually will ask me questions about the products that we're releasing tonight or whatever I'm doing in my project. So if there's a question that you have, um, you know, make sure that, that, if it's something to do with inventory that you contact customer service. But if there's other questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. So now I'm adding some passionate pink in here and I'm just kind of going into the empty spaces. All right. Oh, I love these colors together. It just reminds me of like ice cream in the summer, right? <laughs> Did Tom peek at you guys? <laughs> now I'm going to go back with that orange and I'm going to blend over that pink a little bit because when I blend in between them, I get a whole different color. Okay. Jackie wants to know if uh, she needs to purchase a blending brush for each ink pad. No. What you, what you should probably do is purchase a blending brush for each color family. Our set of 10 brushes is a really great thing to do. Or if you don't want the whole, like the whole set and everything, you could just get like two, four packs and a two pack, just so you have 10 brushes. Cause that will give you a red, an orange, a yellow, a green, a blue, a purple, a pink, a brown, a black, and a gray. And then you can use those for pretty much every ink pad you have in your collection. Because like orange would be good for sweet mango, for tangerine twist, for tomato soup. You could use it for all of them. All you have to do is rub off the excess color in between and you're still in that orange family. So I always recommend 10 blending brushes will get you through just about anything. Now, if you have some obscure color that you want to remain totally pristine, you might want to pick up a special one for that. But 10 should do it. I hope that helps. All right, so now I'm gonna fill in these with passionate pink. These are the centers of some other flower designs that are coming up. All right, now I'm going to pull this up and you can see how pretty those are. Oh, they look so, they just look like, they look yummy. <laughs> And I saw my daughter Rena in here earlier, and I don't know if Rena's still watching. She is actually um, having a, a nice little vacation. So she's probably out and about. Maybe she checked in. But hi, Rena, if you come back later and you see this, thank you for stopping in. I miss you. Okay, so now I'm going to get the second part of that stencil, and I'm going to line that up. And it's easy to line up. All you have to do is line up this. Let me just show you over here. See this part right here? This is the underbelly of this bud. So you want to go right in there like that. And everything else will just wrap around beautifully. 
Okay. There we go. So again, I'm going to tack that down with a little bit of pixie tape. I'm going to replace that. And then I'm going to do some greens. <laughs> her mandalas are back in stock. I'm so thrilled for her. <laughs> it took forever. So we're going to do jelly bean green. And then I'm going to accent the jelly bean green parts with another green color. So let's clean off this brush. And I'll show you what I mean. See, I can use this for jelly bean green, apple mint, grass green, fresh asparagus. I can use it for like all of those greens, but I just have to brush off the color. You can see there's some lucky clover on there because it's a little bit of a more like a Kelly green. So I'm going to just brush most of that off. And then you can see now it's not as dark anymore. So now, yes, cover the butterfly. Thank you. There we go. So now I'm going to use jelly bean green and I'm going to just do some straight away ink blending. I love the layering stencils. I can't get enough of them. I feel like this one would mix and match really nicely with our last bundle too. If you like to blend different styles of flowers together, you could get really creative if you wanted to really take your time. I think you could do some really neat things. Okay, I'm just really getting that green in there. And where do they get the ink pad holders? Uh, these are from the ink stand shop. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise in here. I want to just blue it up a little bit. Not blow it up, but blue it up. So I'm going to find a blue brush. Now here it has my dark blue on it, so I really want to get that off. See, and I'm just cleaning on a paper towel. I don't even wash my blending brushes. I know some people do, but I don't. I just rub off most of the color. So I'm going to use some turquoise C on this, and I'm going to add turquoise C. Let's see, down here at the bottom of a, just a little bit of color in there. And I'll, I'll take high quality picture of this when I'm done, you know, if it looks good. <laughs> no, I will. I'll take a high quality picture. I'm not going to do it on that whole thing. Just doing it down more near the bottom, just to create a little bit of contrast in there. And look at that. Isn't that a beautiful color combination? <laughs> Oh my goodness, a mestimate. <laughs> I love it. Now, when you're cleaning stencils like this that have little, um, little areas that stick out, I like to just rub toward the loose part. So I'm starting where it's attached to the stencil and just rubbing toward the loose part. This way you don't risk bending anything if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. I think it does. I did bend something here. But if you bend something, just go ahead and bend it right back and it will be fine. Okay. So now I'm going to add my next stencil, which is this one here. Now this creates the outside parts of these flowers and it also creates the little dots that go on the insides of these flowers. For the dots, I'm going to do black because I always have to have a little bit of black on every card. But I think for those flowers, I'm going to go with like a, I don't know, I think maybe like a sweet corn, just a nice yellow. Let's get sweet corn. I pulled sweet corn out not that long ago and I fell in love with it all over again. So we're going to do a little sweet corn on there. And if it kind of bleeds that pink, it's going to turn it orange. So I think it's going to work. Oh, let me put my post-it note here. I'm not going to worry about this butterfly because I'm just really concentrating on a very tiny area. So 
So is this the arrangement that the big die cuts? Yes, this is the arrangement the big die cuts. But I will tell you, if you're going to cut the big die, cut the die first and then go back and stencil on the die cut because it's a lot easier to line these up when the die is already cut out. And I'll be showing you more of that. But, but because I decided not to cut anything out here, I just went freestyle. Now I'm gonna use this tiny brush and I'm gonna do just a little bit of black here. So I'm gonna just use my ink cube. Sometimes when I ink up a brush with an ink cube, instead of rubbing the brush on the ink cube, I rub the ink cube on the brush. I find it easier to get ink on it that way. And then I'm gonna add the little black dots in the centers of these flowers. Okay. I saw Kathy Z is here. And I saw Simon Hurley earlier, but the illustrators were on when I saw Simon. So if you're still here, hi, Simon. And hi, Kathy Z. We have a new cat stamp set. I don't know if you saw it yet, but I really feel like you need it. You did? You, you got the, did Kathy get the cat stamp set? I feel like you need it because of Franklin. Oh, look at how fun that is. Isn't that summery? So um, we work with a lot of different illustrators. Um, some of our stencils are designed by my daughter, Alicia, and other ones we work with illustrators that prefer not to have their names attached because they work in more than one industry and they just do their art and license their art. And some of them I design. Okay, so now this, what I'm gonna do next, I'm just gonna leave this like this, just a simple, summery, springy card design. I am going to cut it out with Master Layouts too. And you can see, I mean, it looks so different when you do different, in this case, I cut this image out first so I could overlap it off the edge, you see? Yeah, I don't get my brushes wet either. I never wash my blending brushes ever. And one of the reasons I don't is, number one, I've been using the same blending brushes for years. I only use them with my dye ink and my dye ink doesn't damage the brushes at all. The other thing is this brush head is glued in to the casing. And the more you wet it, the more you loosen the glue and over time your brush head could fall out. Now, if you, if you do wash them, I highly recommend not using water that's too hot because that will help melt the glue quicker. And then if you dry them, dry them face down like this on a paper towel, not this way because you don't want the water to peel, to, to pool in that casing. You want it to drain away from the casing. This stencil is called Create Friendship. It's part of our brand new Create Friendship bundle. All right, so I'm going to be using Master Layouts 2 to cut this out. I really feel like it would be fun to cut it out with... Um, hmm, let me see here. Maybe I'll get a little more creative tonight. Why not, right? Let me just look at my Master Layouts here. I think I'm going to use Master Layouts 5 to cut this out. So I'm going to use this die. The window is a separate die. I'm going to use this die, and then I'm going to mix that because it cuts perfectly with this scalloped die from Master Layouts 4. They coordinate together. So Master Layouts are groupings of dies that work together to create card layouts. That's what the Master Layouts is all about. Groupings groupings of dies that work together to create different kinds of card layouts. You get perfect borders every time. You don't have to worry about cutting it perfectly. They're really fun. And now I'm going to cut this up and over just a little bit like that. So it's going to go off the card a bit. Okay, any new uh, ephemera or polyglaze sheets coming? We have new polyglaze coming very soon. Um, ephemera, we're still working on some ideas. 
Okay, now I'm going to cut this out of white as well. Okay, so let's get that. I do feel like it needs a little black panel. I don't have a black layering panel for this, so I might have to hand cut it if I want it. Okay. Last month's bundle has retired, uh, but you can buy all of the components separately if you're interested in them. Okay, I do kind of like the way this looks together with that little stitching showing on both, but could I ever do a card without black? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is there a chart made up of what master layouts coordinate with each other? Well, these are the only two that actually were designed in different sets that coordinate with each other. Master layouts um, four and master layouts five. Otherwise, everything that coordinates is in the same set. And if you go into our Facebook group and you go into the guides section, you will see idea sheets for every single one of our master layouts die sets. So there's a whole, there's 12 different sheets of ideas. Okay, I might cut a little black layer. So let me measure this. I gotta see how big this is here. So that's three and a quarter by four and ooh, five eighths. So that's tricky. Three, three eighths or five eighths? I think it's three and one, two, oh, three eighths. Thank you, Tom. So that would probably, I could go to there. Three and a half, four and a half. And then three and three eighths. That should do it. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That did it. So that's a good little layer. I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a greeting on here. Again, remember I told you guys this is just a quick little card because it's release night. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to line up these stencils and how pretty it looks. And I just wanted to make a card tonight that just reminded me of candy. And this card reminds me of candy. Yeah, you definitely could use the um, the butterflies with this, the butterfly bundle. You can use any of the bundles and mix and match. Okay, so I'm going to put that. Is that pretty? It's so delicate with the little scalloped edge. Yeah, you could definitely use the butterfly bundle. You could use any of our layering bundles with other bundles. They all work really nicely together. And I do see a little bit of that stitching peeking out around the edge. And I think that's cute. Okay, so now we've got that there. Now I'm going to pick a greeting and I'm going to stamp it with my Misty. Instead of die cutting the greeting, I think I'm going to stamp one. So I want to get that into place. And then we'll just sprinkle a few sequins on this card and it will be good to go. All right, so we've got... I'm going to use the word friend. Let's see. Friend, you mean so much to me. I think that would be really nice. You can't put black on your board. You can't put black borders on. Oh, I can't not put black borders on. <laughs> see, but that's cool because we're all different. And that's what makes everybody's cards so unique and so pretty. I love a pop of black on every single card I make. As you know, if you've followed me for very long, you will see hundreds and thousands of Gina K Designs cards with a black border. <laughs> I've been making cards with black borders for 17 years, on 15 years on YouTube, 16 years. I don't even know anymore. Okay, so I'm going to overlap this a little bit onto my flower design friend. And let's make sure this is going to fit. You mean so much to me. Okay, I'm going to move it over just a little. Okay, and I think I've told you guys this before. I'm going to get my head in the way here for a second. Sorry about that. <coughs> Rena, if you're still watching, <clears throat> I need my roots done. <laughs> hey, Tom, can you get my water? <coughs> Thank you. 
So when I have a greeting like this, I like to do several layers of ink. Tom's getting my water. I talk for more than an hour <coughs> and I cough. <clears throat> Okay, so is there anyone in the studio who knows how to fly an airplane? Uh, if so, please come up to uh, the, uh, the flight deck and let us know your credentials and we'll get this underway as soon as possible. Gina is just having a choking fit, happens. Um, <laughs> so we'll be right back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <coughs> I'm back. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> All right. So, like I said, I like to ink more than once. And where's my chalky tool? Here it is. So, I get a nice, crisp image. You can see that. Can you go to the overhead? <laughs> Here we go. All right. You can see my nice crisp image. All right. So somebody tell me what he said. I'm reading. Oh, it happens to me only on release parties because they just go a little too long. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to put you mean so much to me. And I'm going to slip that right under here. Oh, I love this card. What did you say, Tom? I just asked if anyone could fly an airplane. <laughs> you want to get away? <laughs> okay. All right. That looks good. <clears throat> now I got to do my trick. Because I'm not sure if this is straight. So I'm using the sheet from my stamp. And I am just going to... Tack that down with my magnet. Maybe we can edit that out. Oh, what the heck. Just leave it. <laughs> okay. You mean so much to me. Oh, that looks straight. Oh, I love it. Okay. This fits right in this little area, this little nook. I didn't plan that, but it fits just perfectly. Okay. Here we go. So gently, once... And then, hopefully, I'll get another nice clean image there. Okay. Oh, isn't that pretty? Whoo! I love it. Okay. I don't know why I never bring my water in. I always think I'll be fine because I feel fine at the beginning. <clears throat> and you know, I had cranberry juice, but if I drank that, my diabetes would be out of control. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to put this on a card base. I feel like yellow would be a really pretty color. Let's just look at it and tell me what you think. You think that would be pretty? I love that. It just feels so summery. And I'm ready for summer. Okay, so I'm going to go with this. This is Wild Dandelion. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but a lot of our cardstock is coming back in stock. Finally. I know our heavy base white was scheduled to come back in January. And then our mill pushed it to February, to March, to April, and to May. So now it is May. The problem with our white cardstock is they have to clean the equipment like it's insane the way they have to clean it. It can't be contaminated at all because it's white. And so any little contamination would totally mess up the color. So it takes them a while. 
to make our white. All right, and now I'm going to pop this right onto this card base. And Tom, we're going to give this card away tonight. All right. And you didn't bring your guitar. That would have been the perfect time for you to play, like, do yeah, a Jimmy Buffett hour or something. The one time, you know. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, and let's put some sequins on here. We'll do a few. Ooh, should we do? Look at the pearls. I've been really getting into these pearls lately, and I've been noticing how pretty, like a little bit of a yellow or a pink, just really looks beautiful. And even mixing and matching when you've got some colors, like this one has pink and orange in it. So maybe we'll use some of those. But I have to pick them out first and turn them the right way. And some of them are lighter than the others. They're really beautiful. These are our rainbow pearls. All right, let me get my pick and stick tool and some connect glue. All righty. So we'll put one here, one up here, one up here. I'm going to try those three first. <clears throat> so let's go with the big one. We'll put a big one down here. And then let me pick up. You can see these are a little lighter, but I like the, the difference in color. You find one more of those. Oh, there's even this gorgeous like orange in here. Orange. I say orange because I'm from, I'm from the East Coast. I'm from Philly. I don't know if you guys knew that, but that's where I learned to say orange. Where did you get those dishes? <laughs> my teeth or, <laughs> or my dishes. So we have a little grocery store called Sendix. And they sell the cutest little dishes and plates and things like that. And whenever I go, I always look to see what's new. I got, um, I got these there, these little scalloped edge ones. And I got this tiny one there. And whenever I see a tiny dish, I have to buy it. It's like a little collection that I have because I love to have all my little dishes of embellishments out in front of me. I say washy washy, but, um, I don't know. Is there a different way to say washi? I feel like this needs more pearls. Where should I put? Should I put one down here? I'll put one down here. And then I'll put one. Let me put one here first. I got to pull a few of these out so I can see. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Here's a darker one. And I think I'll put one like right over here. Okay. I really wanted to use the peach ones, but I lost my nerve. There we go. Okay. So I think that card is done. Aren't I afraid? What was that question? Aren't I afraid? I missed it. Aren't you afraid you'll bump the dish and spill all those tiny pearls? Oh, yes, Angie, I have done that. You have no idea what it looks like back here when I bump the dish and they all go. These are over full. I shouldn't, I should have one separate dish for all of these because I do get them caught into each other. You can see, but I just think they look so pretty. They're so enticing. They look like candy to me. The way I say washi is correct. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> okay. All right, Tom. Well, what do you think of this card? Delightful. Yeah. Yeah. It feels <sighs> like May, but not in Wisconsin. Let but... me drink my drink. All right. <coughs> All right, we're going to give this card over. away. Yes, we are. And this is from if you're if you joined us late, this is from the brand new Create Friendship Bundle, stamps, stencils and dies. Yeah, a lid would help you, right? Okay, so who gets this one? I'm going to zoom in a little so All right, cheesy drum roll, please. Here we go. And the winner of this beautiful card is not afraid of color. Ooh, she I like that username. Not afraid of not 
Not color. Afraid of Color. That's a great username. Okay, Not Afraid of Color. All you have to do is send your name and address to info at GinaKDesigns.com. Please let them know that your handle is Not Afraid of Color because that's what I'm going to have on the YouTube description. And uh, I will get this card right out to you. Good news, everybody. I sent like seven weeks of cards out. So if you've been waiting for your card from winning one of our other video cards, it finally went out. So I'll get this one out tomorrow as well. If, as long as Not Afraid of Color lets me know uh, your address. All right, everybody. Well, I can't tell you how excited I am about this new release. I have ideas swimming all over my head and I cannot wait to get back here on Thursday for another Crafternoon Live and make another card using this new layering bundle. And then also check out Melanie Menchinger's YouTube channel because she'll have videos coming up. Lisa Hetrick will have videos. Arjita will have videos. And Debbie will certainly post her spot that she did tonight on her channel as well. Check out our Facebook group for all of the beautiful samples from our team and our guest designers that have joined us. And also on Instagram, Instagram. They are flooding Instagram with beautiful card projects using all of these new products. So you guys, thank you all so much. You can check it all out at gdkdesigns.com and just click on the what's new category. And don't forget that little incentive set is yours with any purchase of $75 or more. All right, everybody. Well, Tom and I'll be back on Thursday for another Crafternoon. And I'll be back over the weekend with another five minute card video. Until then, guys, stay safe and healthy. <clears throat> I will try to do that too. We love you all so very much and mwah, we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.